Well, good Sunday morning. Good Sunday morning to you. This is Faith Life Fellowship's online virtual service. So good to be with you. We give God praise for each and every one of you around this earth. We give God praise today. We give God praise today for the Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. And he is greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So good to be back with you. I'm Pastor Simon. Welcome to Faith Life Fellowship's virtual Sunday service. Coming to you live from Dallas, Texas. I've been away from you for two weeks as we've been traveling. And my son graduated from high school. So we've been hosting people and serving and loving people. But most of all, celebrating my son who finished his high school career and is preparing for college this fall. Y'all pray for me because he's my right hand when he comes to our ministry. I don't know what I'm going to do. We'll see what the Lord does. Me and my wife may have to undergird this, but I tell you what, I'm so proud of him. And uh, we give God praise and thanks <clears throat> for our children. To all of our graduates out there. I celebrate you, whether it's college, high school, um, elementary, whatever it is, trade school, I celebrate you and I say job well done, parents, job well done, job well done. Now on to the, the next season, next chapter of our lives. I know my wife and I, we're about to be empty nesters and we'll see how that goes. And so um, we're so, so, so uh, blessed um, to be favored by God, blessed to have children. Amen. <clears throat> and a, amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are. You're so loving, so kind and merciful, Lord God. You're a generous Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are good. You are good, Father God. And I, Lord, I thank you that you are near to those, Lord God, who love you, Father God, who are called according to your purpose, Father God. And so, Father, <clears throat> I lift up the name of Jesus today, Father God. Father, allow your Holy Spirit to rain down upon us in this moment, in this hour, around the earth, wherever your people are seeking you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you again, and my wife and I, we send you greetings live from Dallas, Texas. Today is May 26th, and um, I've been kind of dealing with a little cold, and so you hear my voice is a little hoarse, but um, I, I'm all well. Thank you for your prayers. For those of you who are praying for this ministry, would you continue to pray for us as we are seeking God for direction? We're seeking God uh, for direction, even as my son is getting ready to transition from one season in his life into another. Lord, help me preach today. Um, uh, I believe my wife and I and many of you, you're getting ready to transition. And so we need, we need the direction of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit to help us um, like uh, never before. We need, we need the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. To many of you around this earth, especially uh, those of you in the Philippines and Africa, uh, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Um, my brothers and sisters in Europe and Canada, we greet you. And um, right here in the United States, we greet you in the wonderful name of Jesus. Special acknowledgement to those who made the ultimate sacrifice in serving and defending the United States of America. Uh, this is Memorial Day weekend. And so tomorrow for us is, <clears throat> as Americans, we memorialize, commemoration, I say, um, those who fought in um, the armed forces. They fought and gave their lives, the ultimate sacrifice. And so, you know, <clears throat> the book of Romans commands us to give honor to whom honor is due. So as a former service member of the United States Navy, um, I salute my fall, fallen brothers and sisters who gave their lives uh, for the freedoms enjoyed by so many. Never forgotten. This is why we take communion. Not only are we commanded to do so, and we'll be doing that next week, by the way, first Sunday, 
But in doing so, we acknowledge the ultimate sacrifice that our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he made for us. He gave us life. He was rejected, beaten, whipped, spit or spat upon. He was scorned, blasphemed, crucified for the sins of mankind, for my sins. Jesus died and was buried and was resurrected on the third day and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, we worship you. We praise you because Jesus is alive. Jesus, I worship you. We worship you. Lord, we thank you for dying on the cross for our sins so that I might, we can live through you eternally. Amen and amen. Amen. So good to be back with you. I definitely miss uh, miss uh, the pulpit. I don't like to be out one week and much less two weeks. And so it's been, t it's been a couple weeks. And so here we go. Um, our scripture verse of the week, you'll find in Joel chapter 2, verses 28 and 20. Nine And the Bible says, and it shall come to pass afterward. Interesting. That I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, will I pour out my spirit and it shall come to pass afterward. All Joel could see was just that something was coming. He couldn't see Jesus hanging on the cross and dying. See, we are in Pentecostal season last Sunday I was not able to teach on Pentecost, and this Sunday we will talk about Pentecost. So I believe what, 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 what Joel saw and what he was pointing to as the Spirit gave him utterance was after Jesus died and rose again, Penta, 50 days later, the Holy Spirit came. Good God that you are. That's revelation. Meditate on that this week, will you? Joel chapter 2. And if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord to fill you. And he will fill you with his spirit. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, you'll find my assignment today as we talk about Pentecost. Uh, just kind of briefly. I'm going to come from Judges 14. I know probably some are thinking he's coming from the book of Acts. Yeah, I'm going to reference that. But the Holy Spirit has led me to teach on Judges 14, verses 1 through 9. 1 through 9, Judges <clears throat> 14, 1 through 9. It's not, an, um, I, I guess, an orthodox way to teach Pentecost, but you know God, he, he does things differently. And we give him praise because we yield ourselves to him. Amen. And amen. Judges 14, verses 1 through 9. Let's get to work, son. The Bible says, Samson went down to Timnah and saw there a young Philistine woman. When he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as my wife. His father and mother replied, Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among all our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? But Samson said to his father, Get her for me. She's the right one for me. Verse 4. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother. 
As they approached the vineyards of Timnah, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him. The spirit, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him so that he tore the lion apart with his bare hands as he might have torn a young goat. The spirit of God came upon him. But he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Then he went down and talked with the woman, and he liked her. Sometime later, when he came back to marry her, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. In it, he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate as he went along. When he rejoined his parents, he gave them some, and they too ate it. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. The spirit of the living God is upon me. The prophetic is upon me. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I stand behind the cross the cross of Calvary, Jesus. Be glorified, Father God, through me. Speak through me. Speak to me. Speak to us, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Well, this Pentecost 2024, I've entitled this particular message, Led by the Spirit, of God, led by the Spirit of God. Who wants to be led by the Spirit of God? Come on, just, just, just tell yourself, Lord, lead me by your Spirit. Lead me by your Spirit. Father, lead me by your Spirit, led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And amen. So good to be back with all of you. My wife asked me if I was ready. I am ready. I am ready. I am ready to learn of the Lord. Amen and amen. Well, greetings and welcome to all of you. May the grace and peace of God be with all of you. Jesus is risen. He is Lord. Amen. Amen to the glory of our God and Father. <clears throat> Amen. When the day of Pentecost occurred, which is 50 days after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible declares in the book of Acts chapter 2 that they were all together in one place. Suddenly. Somebody's about to come upon a suddenly season. Suddenly. A sound like a uh, like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And they saw what seemed to be, the Bible says, tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. In other words, they were speaking in tongues and didn't really understand what was happening. In fact, they were speaking other languages that they didn't even, weren't trained. But they began to begin to speak. See, this is the power of God. This is the Holy Spirit. So the Bible says they were all led, or should I say filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And the Bible says there were God-fearing Jews that were uh, assembled from every nation under heaven uh, uh, in Jerusalem to celebrate uh, what have, would have been the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks, which is seven weeks, okay, after uh, Jesus' uh, death and resurrection, <clears throat> or the Feast of First Fruits, or as my Jewish brothers would say, the Feast of Shavuot. The Sh Feast of Shavuot marked seven weeks, or 49 days plus one, 50 days after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, Pentecost. So the Feast of Shavuot uh, marked the end of 
the spring season and it was the introduction and the beginning of the summer season. I told you, like my son, uh, some of us are about to enter a new season. In fact, that new season is upon you. The Feast of Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks, is, is uh, one of three required feasts that God required uh, the men of Israel to assemble in Jerusalem. That's the Feast of Weeks, or the Feast of uh, Shavuot, uh, the Passover, and Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. And I'm not going to teach on that today, but suffice it to say, they were required to come to Jerusalem. So trying to set it up in your mind, what's happening at this time, because Jesus, he knew what he was doing when he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait. Acts chapter 1, verse uh, 6 and 8, I think it is. <clears throat> go and wait for the promise of the Father. Wait, wait. So he sends them back to Jerusalem. He sends them there, and they're in the upper room praying. 50 days, they had no idea that this was going to happen, but 50 days uh, later, the Holy Spirit fills that room. In fact, it shakes Jerusalem. What does all of this have to do with every or anything? Well, this, 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 this gift, the Holy Spirit, was sent by God. Jesus, who was the ultimate sacrifice for us, for the sins of mankind, in fact, the only sacrifice, <coughs> was received by God, the Father. In turn, now catch this, God sends a gift. That gift was the Holy Spirit. That gift is the Holy Spirit, which is Pentecost, or the Greek name Shavuot, Shavuot, or the Feast of Weeks, okay? So on that day, you had people from uh, all nations all over the world, and uh, the book of Acts lists some of these countries, Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Ferengi, uh, Serene, uh, Rome, uh, uh, Cretans, Arabs, so on and so forth. <clears throat> this event was the undeniable and unmistakable evidence of a tremendous move of the spirit of the living God. Now, my wife and I, we're constantly praying for revival. And I, I told my wife uh, just this morning that I hear it. I hear the sound of revival. I hear the sound of revival. Uh, just as God sent his spirit into the earth as the prophet Joel prophesied, Peter, in that same chapter, he reminds the skeptics and the doubters by telling them that this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel, pretty much what we read. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams, and on my men's service and maid service, I will pour my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. He says, I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Do you see them? It's happening now. Blood and fire, vapor of smoke. Pastor, what does that mean? Well, it could mean, or pointing to, wars, rumors of wars, famine, pestilence, murders, rapes, all kind of criminal activity, climate, weather changes, wildfires, storms, tornadoes, hurricanes, you understand, some leading to death of humanity across this globe. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome Lord. What is this? What does this mean? Uh, the sun shall be turned into darkness. Truth would be obscured. Truth would be hidden. It would be veiled. Truth would be seen as a lie and a lie as truth. Falsehoods would be, would be taken as the word of God, as the truth. Apostasy, apostasy amongst the church uh, would run rampant. In other words, there would be a falling away from God. Verse 21, Peter says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. In other words, who, whoever shall endure, you're going to be saved. How did Peter know this? I'm glad you asked. 
He got a revelation from the Heavenly Father. Lord, we need a revelation of your will. We need a revelation, Lord. We need a revelation. We need to be able to prophesy, Lord, and hear your prophets. And Jesus also told his disciples in Acts 1 and 4, when he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise, the Father, because you will receive power. Peter remembered. He got a revelation from God, and he remembered the words of Christ. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses uh, to me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Lord, we need a revelation of your, or by your Spirit. We need a revelation, Father God. We need to be led by your precious Holy Spirit. I've entitled this message, Led by by the Spirit of God, led by the Spirit. We need, I cannot say it enough, that we need now more than ever, we need to be led by the Spirit. How are you led? You're in the Word. You're in prayer. You're fasting. You're spending time with Him. Uh, you're living righteously, you understand, so that we can hear from God. Lord, we need to hear from you, not man. We need to hear from you. There are many voices out there. But you will know it when it's God and when it's man. Make this your prayer this week. Lord, I want to be led by your spirit. Even as Jesus was led by you. Now, there were three verses of scripture. And I'm going to have my son put that <coughs> on the screen for us so that we can see. There were three verses of scripture that shows us that Jesus was led by the Spirit. Matthew chapter 4 and 1. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Mark chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted uh, by Satan and was with wild beasts and the angels ministered to him. Luke chapter 4. Then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by the devil. The significance of this is to show us that even our Lord and Savior had to be led by the Spirit of God. No one just wants to go into a season of dryness, of famine and sword. No one just wants to go into a season of suffering. Jesus was led, either you're going to be led by the Spirit, or you're going to be driven by the Spirit to go. In other words, God's going to make it so tough for you that it's going to drive you into his purpose. Are you going to be led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to go through your testing? We've all been there. There are some things that we would like to not go through, but we all we all will cross these um, these these tests, if you will, these trials, uh, if you will. And it's not just one time. It's it's constantly test being tested. The nations, as I said, were assembled in Jerusalem to fulfill God's requirement for the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Shavuot to worship God and to bring their gifts and present that before him in the temple. Unbeknownst to them, God was sending his spirit. Unbeknownst to us, I believe revival is on its way. Those who are in the upper room got a chance to experience something remarkable. And then the prophecy, Joel chapter 2, even what Jesus says, the prophecy of the Spirit of God being poured out upon all flesh was now manifesting. And it is still manifesting today. This was not a one-time event. A pastor that happened in Acts chapter 2, that was it. It is still occurring today. The oil has not ceased. 
God is still pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. Yes, all. All means all flesh, which simply means all to whom he so desires to select and choose to be among his flock. The whosoever will. The whomsoever will. What, all, what does all of that have to do with Samson's desire to marry a Philistine woman? I'm glad you ask. Holy Spirit, help me to put this together as you gave it to me. Won't be before you long today. I don't have any points, but I do have some things to challenge us to think about. <clears throat> as Samson was attracted to a Philistine woman, so is God attracted to sinners. God is attracted to you. Philistines were seen as outsiders. There was not supposed to be any mingling with outsiders. This is the issue they had, they had with Jesus. He wasn't supposed to sit with sinners. He wasn't supposed to uh, talk and conversate and laugh with sinners. He wasn't supposed to do that. He was supposed to obey the law. But you see, the dispensation of grace was upon us. It was upon them at that time and still is now. Samson is a type of what would happen uh, some, what, 12, 700 years later? Isaiah 700, so about a thousand years later. I'm going to prophesy that revival is coming. And it's not going to be the way, I believe it's already here, but it's not going to be the way that we think. It's going to start, it's, 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 it's going to start in unconventional ways. Not so much in a building is what I'm trying to say. Revival led by the Spirit of God is coming. Revival is coming to your home. Samson and his parents are going to the Philistines. They're going to the people. He's he's got his eyes on a on a woman. I, I'm God is attracted to sinners. God is attracted to those who are seen as the outcast. God is attracted to those who seemingly don't have it. Uh, don't have it all together like some people do. I want you to speak it over yourself. That 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 the spirit of God is attracted to me. I want you to tell yourself that I am being led by the spirit of God. I want you to speak it over yourself that the spirit of the living God is leading me, that the spirit of God is with me, no matter what the situation is, no matter that I'm struggling with homosexuality or I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that, addictions and so on and so forth, that the spirit of God is being poured out upon all flesh. Speak it over yourself. Come on, wherever you are, just speak it over yourself, over your land, your family, your finances, your nation. Come on, some things will not happen unless you speak to that mountain. You're begging pastors for money and so on and so forth, but you and you're idolizing men, <coughs> but you won't worship God. <clears throat> first things first is putting him first, not Pastor Simon or any other person. Seek the Holy Spirit. I've lost some of you, and that's okay. Some things will not happen unless you speak to that mountain. Some things will not happen until you stop your sin. Some things will not happen until you exhibit faith. We cannot see change without prayer 
and faith in God to execute what we desire. The righteousness, that's something that we should be already doing. Samson, he was a Danite, a Danite from the tribe of Dan. Uh, the tribe of Dan really, other than Samson, had no one really that was, I guess, uh, celebrated or popular that came from that tribe. Samson was the only one. He was the son of Manoah, a Nazarite for life a judge of Israel for 20 years. What does it mean to be a Nazarite? A Nazarite means that the male child had to follow these strict laws outlined by God. Numbers chapter 6, for your reference. But the shard of it is, is that there were three things that they could not do. There was a few other things, but the three main things that a Nazarite could not do was they could not drink alcohol. Uh, they did not drink wine, strong drink, vinegar, grape juice, eat grapes or raisins. Uh, they Anything dealing with the vineyard, with the vine, they had to stay away from. They could not cut their hair. There was never to be a razor to their head. And they had to avoid contact with dead things. They did not come into contact with uh, corpses, uh, 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 carcasses, graves, even those of dead family members. They could not come in contact. They could not touch. So the vial of a Nazarite, they had to uh, uh, um, hold on to those, those three, those three things. So Samson, the Bible says, he goes down the Timna and he sees a young Philistine woman who, who he's, uh, he's attracted to. Now, Philistine means immigrant or stranger. Immigrant or stranger. And when he returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timnah. Now get her for me as wife. And his father and mother objected immediately. Not bad parents. They were just wanting to follow the law. Isn't there an acceptable woman among your relatives or among our people? Must you go to the uncircumcised Philistines to get a wife? The Samson said to his father, get her for me. She's the right one for me. Now, what stuck out to me this past week was verse 4. And it actually, just for me, I don't know about for you, <clears throat> but it leapt out at me. And I've read the story many times, but this, this leapt out at me. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines for at that time they were ruling over Israel. So I had to research what was going on and Israel had gotten themselves in some sin and so on and so forth. So God turned them over to the Philistines. But you see, deliverance was on the horizon and that deliverance was going to come at the hand of Samson. The parents, listen to me, the parents did not understand this. And for all of us who are parents and our children make choices and decisions, you know those head-scratching decisions that we don't understand, perhaps don't even like it. And you're thinking, you're talking amongst yourselves, I did not teach you this. I did not model this for uh, before you. I did not train you to do this. And they're, they're, they're making these decisions which don't make any sense. You, you know those moments that we have where we don't understand and we're beating ourselves up and we're crying out and lamenting before God and so on and so forth, thinking that failure is their end. I have good news for you. His parents did not know that this was from the Lord who was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. For at that time, they were ruling over Israel. Listen to me. Some of our children, I'm not talking to everybody. I'm talking to some of us who were parents and, 
We're going through some things with our children. We don't understand what's happening and why this is happening, but I'm telling you that God is using that situation to confront some things that are happening or going on inside of them. The parents, Manoah and his wife, did not know why Samson wanted a Philistine wife. There are plenty of women within our own culture. There are plenty of women that you can choose from. But the Bible says, see, we think we know the Bible, but we really don't. We think we know who God is, but we really don't. If, read it for yourself. Verse 4, ponder it. It says, his parents did not know that this was from the Lord. What do you do when your daughter, when your son do something that you don't understand and it's God that's behind it? What do you do? Because the Bible says he was seeking an occasion to confront the Philistines. In other words, he was going to use Samson and this woman in this moment and Samson would have many issues with many women and so on and so forth. That it was his weakness, you understand. Listen, to confront the Philistines, whatever it is that's going on in your child, in your family, perhaps God is using it to force them to confront some things in their heart. Because it says, for at that time they were ruling over Israel. Listen to me, God wants to rule over their hearts. Not what they're worshiping. Not what they think, not what the ways of the world, this universe and all this foolishness on college campuses and, and on the internet and so on and so forth. Listen to me, God is in control. Why a Philistine? You know, sometimes God confounds the wise and will oftentimes go outside of the family, outside of religious traditions. He'll go outside, out, outside, you understand? Hebrews 13 and 12 tells us, and so Jesus also served outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Some things can't be done in front of mom and dad. Some things can't be done inside the house. Sometimes God pulls them out, pulls them away from us, pulls them so that he can now be a father to them. Hebrews 13 and 13 continues, let us then go to him outside the camp, bearing the uh, disgrace he bore. Uh, let us go outside of what we think. Let's pray. John 1 and 10. He was in the world and the world was made through him <clears throat> and the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. But as many did receive him, to them gave he the right to become children of God. God, he's got this way of going outside of the religious. Going outside of what we think. Our religious dogma. You understand all of our little... Uh, uh, rituals and so he'll go outside just maybe your daughter God is working through her and working in her your son mom your son God's got it <clears throat> God's got him and the Bible says in verse 5 Samson went down to Timnah together with his father and mother read it verse 5 he went down to Timna together with his father and mother, and as they approached the vineyards of Timna, suddenly a young lion came roaring toward him, did not come roaring towards the parents. This is not about mom and dad. This is about your child. Whoever that's for. Read, it's right there. I don't know what happened, how they got split up, but the Bible says they were all together going to Timna, going to a certain area. The lion comes roaring toward him, but not mom and dad. This season is a moment that is not about you or me, but it's about our children. See, this is how God's going to going to do revival. We think because our son is gay and our daughter is gay and they're this and they're that. 
uh, that that the world it's 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 over and so on and so forth and there's no hope. But let me let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you, as this 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 the the ways of the world uh, and the the transformation of the world and how people uh, view the world, and how we view God and so on and so forth, and the attack on the gospel and this and that. I I want to tell you that God has a special anointing for our children. And I want to tell you that Samson handled it. They are more than able to handle this. God has our children. If we'll be just led by the Spirit. In other words, take a chill pill, Henry. Take a chill pill. Relax. Trust in God. This is what I mean by being led by God. I, if I can just get on my knees and pray more and stop whining, stop complaining, and pray more. The Bible says the lion came roaring towards Samson and not the parents. You see, life will come roaring towards all of us. But in this context, it says it comes roaring towards Samson. Life may be roaring at your children. Yeah, yeah. The difficulties of life, you understand? Financial pressures. Pressures of being who they are and so on and so forth. Trying to figure out who they are and this and that or whatever. But the word of the Lord would say to us, release them. Release them to make their own decisions. This is what Manoah, Samson's parents did. Okay, this is what you want. This is what they did. Release them so that they'll make those mistakes. Well, Pastor, I'm trying to help them not make the mistakes. <clears throat> Failure is an excellent teacher. Pastor, how they're going to make it then? I need answers. Your answer is verse 6. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. There it is. It's right there. The Spirit. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of the living God. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. Pastor, you're asking, how am I going to make it? The Spirit. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord will come down powerfully upon you. The Spirit of God. Those of you who are doing things by yourselves and raising your family, the spirit. See, this is where prayer comes. This is where uh, the more time, devotion, you understand. Because the oil shall not cease. I prophesy that to you. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of God. The Bible says, came powerfully upon him, said that he tore the line apart. They'll handle those life issues. And they'll learn from it. <clears throat> he tore the line apart with his bare hands as, as if he might have torn a young girl. In other words, Samson in that moment was given power, exceptional power. Can I tell you that we serve an exceptional God? who is more than able to give our children the ability to handle this. In other words, take your hands off of it. Take your hands off of it. And the Bible says, but he told neither his father nor his mother what he had done. Don't know exactly why, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you my theory. He was a Nazarite. And his mom took that vow for him when, when that child was born. Had he told them what he did, immediately it would have threw them into some sort of chaotic fracas. Because we took this vow and you killed this animal. That means you touched a dead thing and you are defiled. Uh, defiled. And there was all these rituals and this and that or whatever. Uh, he kept his mouth shut. Whoever you are, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. 
Bible says that when he went back later to marry her, verse 8, he turned aside to look at the lion's carcass. Again, he's a Nazarite. He cannot touch dead things. Look what he does. He turned aside to look at the lion's carcass, and in it he saw a swarm of bees and some honey. I don't know about you, but I'd have got away from it, Nazarite or not, because I'd have got stung. Look what Samson does. He scooped out the honey with his hands and ate it as he went along. You gotta allow them to get stung. You got to allow them to get stung as they pursue the sweet things of life. As we pursue the sweet things of life, God says to Israel three or four times, I'm sending you into a land flowing with milk and honey. That honey represents the uh, uh, the sweet things of life, the things that we want, you know, the BMW, the money, the this, the house, the this, but it's going to come with a price. So be ready for persecutions. You're going to get stung. You're going to get stung. You got haters. They're going to talk about you and criticize you. That's just how it is. The honey is, is the sweet things of life, and he scoops it up and he takes it. What about the milk, Pastor? I never knew what that meant. The milk comes from cows who eat green grass, right? <laughs> milk speaks of fertility. Every creature on earth drinks milk. Humans are the only ones that keep drinking it beyond uh, uh, our nurturing as infants. Fertility. Pastor, what does that mean? It means you come and you're coming into a season. I'm going to tell my wife. I'm going to prophesy it over. We're coming into a season. Good God that you are. That whatever we touch turns to gold. It's fertile. <laughs> Ready for the sweet stuff? Prepare to be stung. Bees just don't let you take their sweet stuff. Enemies just don't allow you to just take the sweet stuff. Everybody's got an opinion. Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion. Bible says he scooped out the honey with his hands. Hands, not one, both. No doubt he got stung. And ate it as he went along. Whatever stung him, it, it, did, it didn't stop him. Whatever has stung you, you got to get over it. Whatever's happened in your past, you gotta you gotta get past that in order to enjoy the sweet stuff. The Bible says when he rejoined his parents, he gave them some. And they ate it too. God wants us to share him with others. We got this good stuff called Jesus. He is manna from heaven. It the Bible says manna was honeycomb. He is the honeycomb. He is the sweet stuff. And so he's called, I'm telling you, if we understand this being led by the Spirit, this is everything to do with Pentecost. It's about sharing the gospel, the Holy Spirit uh, helping us, enabling us to speak to others that we might be able to share the sweet stuff. Not that you just got a car outside or you got money and this and that. You got a fine suit and that, that's, that's not it. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. So Samson, he shares it with his parents. But he did not tell them that he had taken the honey from the lion's carcass. Listen to me. You can, you can mitigate your warfare if you'll keep your mouth Shut. You cannot tell everybody everything about your business. Where did you get that? Oh, God has been so good. Just glorify God. Just glorify God. Don't glorify yourself. Keep your mouth shut. Give God some praise. Not everybody has to know what has happened. Because you know what? The spirit of the living God is upon me. The spirit of the living God has led me to this job, has led me to this city. You understand? 
<coughs> the spirit of the living God has connected me. I, I, I can't say it enough. When we talk about Pentecost, it's more than just yeah, I speak in tongues. It's, it's more than just prayer. It's more than just showing people that I can speak in tongues and so on and so forth. Paul says, I speak in tongues and I speak more than all of you. That's not the important thing. The important thing is that you prophesy. In other words, prophecy is about edifying the body of Christ. How, is the, how else is this about revival? How is this about Pentecost? Samson didn't die as a result of him touching something dead. And he perhaps could have. Nor was the Spirit of God taken from him. Just think about it. He led uh, Israel for 20 years as judge. God didn't take his spirit from him for violation or trespass of a solemn vow to God. This represents what was coming, God's grace upon all of us. His grace and mercy that would come from the death of his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Listen, as Jesus hung on, hung on that cross, he gave up the ghost and he was lifeless. The Roman soldier seeing this did not break his legs to ensure a quick death from suffocation, but rather they pierced his side. And out came blood and water from the carcass, that lifeless body, came the sweet stuff, the blood and the water. He is the manna that hung on that cross. And we all can come and take of that, like Samson did for the, 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 the lion, the carcass. We can come and take from Jesus. Oh, I hope you hear me. Jesus was led by the Spirit, and he got on that cross, and he died for all of us. Now, he suffered, bled, and died. But for those of us who will take the honey from him, listen, bees all around, people telling you this, that, don't believe this, don't believe that. Listen, listen, there's persecutions for following him. But look, look, it doesn't matter. You go your way and you enjoy the sweet stuff, the blessings, the grace the mercy, and you share with others. God, that's so good. That is so good. This is Pentecost. This is the spirit of the living God. This is the fulfillment of scriptures. Even Hebrews chapter 4, when it says, Seeing then now that we have a high great pre uh, priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points was tempted, as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to, to the throne of that honey, grace. Let us come boldly. See, because he understands, although he was without sin. Let us come therefore boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain honey, mercy, and find grace to help us in the time of need. I declare and decree that God by his spirit is coming to Timna. It's coming to your land. It's coming to this earth, seeking sinners as Samson sought that Philistine uh, woman. He's coming to earth, seeking sinners to become a a, a part of the bride of Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus wants to marry you. It's as simple as that. Sinners. 
God is sending his spirit into the earth, seeking the lost, the blind, the mute, the deaf, the sick, to heal their infirmities and to save their souls. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I want to be led by your spirit. I want to be led by the spirit of God. Father, even as Samson, unbeknownst to Samson, unbeknownst to his parents, verse 4 shows it. Lord, you were leading him by your spirit. You had ulterior motives in the background. Although Samson wanted to marry this, this Philistine woman, it was deeper than that. It was me, a sinner. It was, it was us, Father. You had an ulterior motive. The parents didn't understand. Lord, many of us don't understand why our children are doing some of the things that they're doing. But Lord, we lift our children up to you and we trust, Father, that, Father, you have their lives in your hands, that you are in control, although it doesn't look, it doesn't look like it. I thank you, Father God. I didn't read in Hebrews 4, but <clears throat> you, all things are naked before you. You know all. You see all. You hear all. You know all. Lord, call us by your spirit to prayer, a deeper devotion in you. Father God, that we wouldn't fight our children and be uh, separated and arguing and fighting and so on and so forth, but Lord, that we would, we would seek you and that we would love them, Father, and watch you do a miracle in and through them. And Lord, when they come through that, that they would tell of the sweet stuff that they experienced from you through all of it. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person, every pastor, every uh, leader <clears throat> that's listening. I lift up my own children. I lift up my wife. 29 years. Thank you, Father, for my children, my wife, my church family. I thank you for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Lead us. We submit to you in Jesus' name. <clears throat> amen and amen. Well, I hope you got something out of that. It's good to be back with you. And um, I, I pray next uh, next week, I think I'm going to, if the Holy Spirit allow me, we'll keep talking about the Holy Spirit. We'll see what happens. But um, we'll start our summer series officially next, uh, next Sunday, uh, be Communion Sunday. <clears throat> We're so glad that we've had the opportunity to come uh, into your listening wherever you are, whatever time of week this is. We give God praise and thanks for you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Amen <clears throat> and amen. Well, God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday, uh, first Sunday, June. We'll have communion, and uh, uh, we'll see you then. God bless you. Have a great week. <clears throat>